Let's talk a minute here about database transactions. We're about to do some coding in a checkout process where we have multiple steps that need to be completed as one unit. So think of this uh, stores problem. Let's say that there is a customer that comes along and does a checkout, enters the ordered process, and he gets a, a failure notice on his uh, computer screen. But he gets a bill in the mail because he uh, got an order, apparently. So you're going to have some angry customers if you have a halfway completed checkout process. So you can see on the right side, uh, in your computer system, the customer was charged successfully, but there was an inventory problem and there was no product on the shelf. So you did half the process, that means you charged him, you didn't do the other half of the process, which means you mailed him the package. And so that would be a real problem. So we're trying to avoid that in our application. So here's another diagram. If we were to have a state of, uh, of a transaction, we begin our state with like a complete order. The transaction part might be multiple items, like we would charge a credit card, update inventory, delete the shopping cart, uh, create an order in the table. There might be lots of things that we do. And before we go and completely that complete that with a commit statement we we check to see if everything's okay if any part of the process fails we do what's called a rollback the transaction will fail the uh, customer will get a notice that says there was nothing purchased the credit card is not bought and so it would uh, it would fail and the, everyone would be uh, uh, okay with that the process of making a database work reliably with multiple transactions is called the acid process the part that we're going to focus on is the first letter A. So an atomic transaction means that if you have a series of things that all must be completed as a group, the transactions are completed together or not at all. The other letters are important but beyond the scope maybe of this project. Consistency means that if you have valid data in your database, people are going to get to see uh, the correct data like they expect. Isolation means that when two people are doing a process on the same record, that one of those people gets to do the uh, operation and does not affect the other. And so the durability, of course, is it says written data will not be lost. So we're going to focus on the letter A in this application. So here's a more wordy definition of what we just saw in the previous slide. So. Atomicity is the transaction involving two or more discrete pieces of information. Either all of the pieces are committed or none are. And so we'll see that in a few minutes with our code. Stating again, this is a transaction that is all or nothing. Each unit of the work must be performed in a database completely in its entirety or have no effect whatsoever. So we'll do a sample example here. For instance, let's say you are doing a transfer of a bank account uh, funds from one bank account to another. So if you took money out of your checking and decided that you wanted to put it into your savings, you better make sure that the uh, deposit succeeds before you actually do the uh, debit against one of the accounts. So you don't lose any money. So why should you care about ACID in your application design? Let's see what would happen if you don't enforce these rules of uh, referential integrity. First of all, your, your data quality is bad, so you never know if your rows are what they're supposed to be. Uh, downstream systems will have your will not be able to use your data as well. Uh, your application might crash, you'll have errors, and uh, you would have some cost involved. And so if your data is corrupted, your database administrator will have to go in and fix these items manually, and your customers will be angry. So here's another example of uh, what you might use uh, ACID uh, credentials for or ACID procedures. First of all, let's say we create a new user. There are two tables to update when you create a new user. First of all, we have the users table, which in includes his first name, last name, and address. And then the credentials table might have something about the password and the username, and for some reason you decide to keep those separate. You make sure that you have both tables update together or not at all, because if you have the what they call auto commits turned on, uh, your user table might get the new, new user, but the credentials table might not. So auto commit is a process that we're going to look at and actually turn it off when we get to our coding. So here are some good practices 
if you want to make sure that your data is uh, valid. So put your transactions in our business layer. So we're going to demonstrate that in an in-class exercise as well as in the application. We don't do any transactions in our database administration object. And so we're going to use declaratives to mark the beginning and ending of a, a business transaction. And we will call the commit statement or rollback, either one, at the end of our process. So in the next few videos, we're going to go through a simple checking account processing system and demonstrate how the uh, ACID uh, procedure should work. And then later, we'll come back to our application with a shopping cart and we'll do a checkout process with an atomic transaction so that it doesn't have half a transaction.